Hey students, welcome to lecture number 8 of multiple zeta values and modular forms. So today we want to finish uh, section 2 where we talk about the algebraic setup. So last time we introduced shuffle and stuffle regularized multiple zeta values and they were maps which extended this um, zeta map here from H0 to R and H0, the, the, the space of all linear combination of admissible words, was a subspace uh, of H1 of all indices and we extended this map um, here in two ways by um, introducing shuffle and stuffle regularized uh, multiple zeta values, which we will recall in a second. And today we want to compare these two um, regularizations <coughs> and from this we will also get a <coughs> family of linear relations, which we will hear uh, the extended double shuffle relations. So we will start um, section number three here by using the results we obtained here in section two. But first uh, let's uh, review again what we did uh, last time. So last time as a corollary of a more general theorem <coughs> we had the statement that this H1 with the shuffle product, the stuffle product and also our stuffle head product coming from this Q series G, they all can be written as a polynomial ring where the coefficients are given by elements in H0. And here these polynomials, um, we understood them as elements in this uh, ring here where we take these uh, quasi-shuffle products. Uh, and, um, and with this um, we were able to, to define... So first of all, one example of the statement is this following here, that this word um, Z1, Z1, uh, Z2 which are, which is an element in H1, which is not in H0. So this can be written as a polynomial in Z1, which is given by this Y here, with the shuffle product, meaning all products here are given by shuffle product, and the coefficients here are all elements in H0. And the same we could do for the stuffle product, where the coefficients are given by elements in H0, and also for this uh, stuffle head. And with this, um, we were able to define um, these regularized uh, multiple zeta values. So for this, so recall we had this uh, zeta map, which goes from H0 to, to the space of multiple zeta values. And uh, using the corollary before, we obtained uh, a map from H1, and then either shuffle or stuffle, to this H0 as a, with a polynomial uh, in, in T and um, and the map was given like this. So if I have a polynomial in the shuffle or stuffle product, then the coefficients are in H0 and this map rec T sends this to this polynomial here in T with the same coefficients in H0. And with this we were able to define um, this algebra homomorphism here, this zeta bullet, where bullet is shuffle or stuffle, by first using this rec map, which gives a polynomial like this, and then for each coefficient we can apply the zeta map, and therefore we get a polynomial uh, where the coefficients are multiple zeta values. And these we denoted by, by this here, so the shuffle regularized multiple zeta values is a zeta shuffle of an arbitrary index k, which is the image of this map here, of this word uh, z of this index k, and the stuff regularized were denoted by zeta asterisk, um, where this k is an arbitrary index given by the image of this map here of this word zk. And as an example from, so if you look at this example here and we take this expression here, so this gives us somehow the, the definition of this rec. And so one example here therefore, the shuffle regularized multiple zeta value 112 is given by, by this polynomial here, and the stuff regularized multiple zeta value 112 is given by this polynomial here. And at the end of last lecture we already um, saw that these two are different, so, and this we want to make it precise now. So if you look at the coefficient of t squared, then we see they are the same, and also here the coefficient of t so here it's 2 times zeta 2 1, and here it's uh, zeta 2 1 plus zeta 3, but they are the same because we know that uh, zeta 2 1 
equals zeta 3. So this was a, well, the first relation we proved, but this was also a consequence of the duality relation. And then here the constant term, um, we said that they are different, but this I want to make precise now. So here we have 3 times zeta 2, 1, 1, and here we have zeta 2, 1, 1, zeta 3, 1, and 1 half zeta 4. So let's compare them. So what do we know? So for example, we know that zeta 2, 1, 1, also as a consequence of the duality, is zeta 4. And also this zeta 3, 1, we know that zeta 3, 1 uh, is 1 over 4 zeta 4. So this was a consequence of the finite double shuffle relation. And so therefore everything here by using these formulas can be written as some, some multiple of zeta 2, 1, 1. So if we consider the difference of zeta shuffle 1, 1, 2 and zeta stuffle 1, 1, 2 here, then these terms are the same. And here we take uh, 3 minus 1 and here we have 1 fourth zeta 2, 1, 1 and here 1 half. So in total we get, so this is 3 minus 1 minus 1 fourth minus 1 half. So this is uh, 5 over 4. So zeta uh, 2, 1, 1. So in other words, because zeta 2, 1, 1 is uh, zeta 4, this is 5 over 4 zeta 4. And we also know that zeta 4 is um, zeta, a multiple of zeta 2 squared. So this we know due to Euler. This is one of the things we discussed in the first lecture. So this is actually just 1 half um, zeta 2 squared. So in particular, these are really different because uh, zeta 2 is not 0. But they just differ by, by this, um, by this one-half uh, zeta 2 squared. And the, the result we want to discuss now is that there's actually an explicit map which um, sends this zeta stuffle to the zeta shuffle and which also explains this difference here. So the, the goal is, what we want to discuss is, we want to define a linear map rho, which goes from the polynomial ring with real coefficients to the polynomial ring with real coefficients, such that if I apply this rho to the Staffel regularized multiple zeta value, this gives a new polynomial, and this polynomial is exactly given by this um, zeta shuffle here. And we will see that, for example, this rho of 1 is just 1, and rho of t is just a t. So on these two, um, this linear map doesn't do anything. But rho of t squared will be t squared plus zeta 2. And now if you look back here, so if we apply rho to this one here, and we apply, so therefore we apply rho um, to these uh, t squared and t into the 1. So this doesn't change anything here, and also um, doesn't change the t. But if the rho sends the t squared to uh, zeta 2, then we get an um, additional zeta 2 here, and therefore we get an additional 1 half zeta 2 squared here, which is exactly uh, the difference here. So if we would have a map which satisfies this, uh, then at least in this example, um, this goal is uh, accomplished. But of course, um, we want a rho such that this works in general. Okay, and this is what we want to uh, describe now. So, so the section is a comparison of these uh, two regularization. And to define this row, we first define this power series uh, A here. So A of U, so this is a power series uh, in the variable U with coefficients uh, being real numbers. And it's given by this exponential of this sum here of these uh, single zeta values. So if you multiply this out, then each coefficient of this u <coughs> is a polynomial in single zeta values, where the weight, so here you see it's the weight 5, is exactly given by this um, 
exponent of u. And this coefficient uh, we call um, gamma k. So gamma 1 is 1 and uh, uh, gamma 0 is 1, gamma 1 is a zeta 2 half, and so on. And with this, um, we now define our map rho from R. So we want So I find the linear, the R linear map So if I have an R linear map from the polynomial ring um, with real coefficients to the polynomial ring with real coefficients, I need to say what this row does uh, on the monomials uh, t to the n. And we define this by, by this equality here. <coughs> then we think that uh, rho applied to this power series in uh, u and t should be equal to this power series in uh, u and t. And uh, so what this? So if we write this out, what what does this mean, and why does this define our our row? So so the right hand side is row of uh, one plus uh, oops t u. Or maybe write it out directly. So this is rho of t u plus rho of t squared u squared half plus and so on and this should equal to and here I also have the, the product of these um, of this a which is a power series in u and this I multiply with this exponential So therefore, if I look at the coefficients of this u, then if I compare them, for example, the right-hand side starts with 1. I see, for example, that rho of 1 uh, should be 1. And then if I look here on the right-hand side for the coefficient of u, this will give me the definition of rho of t. So in other words, um, I mean, it's already written here, we get for all m greater equal to 0, um, this formula here. Um, which defines us uh, this row uniquely if we want that this row is an R linear map. So let's make this uh, precise. So here's an example of rho for the first few powers of t. So here's what I what I said before. Rho on 1 is just 1, rho of t is t, and rho of t squared is this t squared uh, plus zeta 2, which also explains here this example that in this case um, the difference of this stuffle and shuffle regularize is exactly if we apply rho to this then we get an additional um, then we get rho um, t squared plus uh, zeta 2 here so therefore we get an additional one half zeta 2 and then they they equal the shuffle and the rho of the stuffle and this statement um, holds in general, and this is the reason why we define this uh, row. So here again is an example. So if we take the stuff I regularized and we apply the row of this, then we get exactly this polynomial here, which is exactly this shuffle regularized multiple zeta wave. And the statement is that this um, holds in general, namely that we have this theorem here. For all indices uh, k, we have that the shuffle regularized multiple zeta value equals rho of the stuffle regularized multiple zeta value, or if you view them as a map from H1, then this map uh, zeta shuffle is the map zeta stuffle, and then after this we apply the map rho. And so this um, can be found, for example, in the work of Ihara Kaneko and Zagi, but also was uh, known before, but the proof sketch I give here is, uh, is from there. And the main idea is that we need to compare these truncated multiple zeta values and the multiple pulley logarithms. So recall, we had these truncated multiple zeta values, which were an algebra homomorphism from H1 with a Staffel product to Q. And 
we had these multiple pulley logarithms, which were an algebra homomorphism from H1 with the shuffle product to the space of the continuous function in the interval um, 0 to 1. And so they, these uh, stuff, these truncated multiple theta values satisfy the Stuffel product formula, and these multiple pulley logarithms satisfy the shuffle product formula, and therefore with the same argument as before, I mean, if we go back to this corollary here, um, using this result here, this means that, for example, the truncated multiple zeta values can also be written as a polynomial in the truncated multiple zeta value zeta 1m, where the coefficients are given by truncated multiple zetas of admissible indices, and also the multiple pulley algorithm of an arbitrary index can be written as a polynomial in y, which corresponds to the multiple pulley algorithm of the index 1, and the coefficients are given by uh, multiple pulley logarithms of admissible indices. Because the proof of this formula here just uses um, the shuffle and the stuffle product. So therefore, um, we are interested in, in these um, zeta 1s and the pulley logarithm of 1. So in other words, um, we are interested in zeta 1m. So this is a multiple pulley logarithm as a the truncated multiple zeta value of the index 1, which is just the harmonic number. And there we know that um, for, for m goes to infinity, we have this behavior here. So this is the log of m plus the Euler um, Mascheroni's constant uh, plus O of uh, 1 over m. And using this and the fact that these truncated multiple zeta values satisfy uh, the Staffel product, one can show that for any index, these uh, truncated multiple zeta values can be written as this truncated multiple zeta value, and now it's a polynomial in somehow in, 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 in zeta m1, so we get this part here, and we are, one can also check that. Um, so before I said that um, these truncated multiple zeta values can be written as a polynomial in zm1, where the coefficients are given by zms of m admissible indices, and um, comparing these Zm for admissible indices and the multiple zeta values for admissible indices, uh, one can show that the difference um, is in this O um, log to the power j, where j is some integer over m, and therefore um, we get this statement here. So in other words, we can replace these zeta m of admissible indices um, by the multiple zeta values and therefore obtain this um, regularized, this stuffed regularized multiple zeta value as a polynomial in this part here. And similarly, um, for the multiple uh, poly logarithm, so what is a zeta 1 there? So in this case, so li1 is, well, if you write down the definition, this is just uh, uh, where this is. I mean, the definition of li1 is, is this. So this is log uh, uh, 1 over 1 minus uh, z. And with a similar argument, because they satisfy the shuffle product formula, uh, any multiple pulley logarithm of some index k can be written as a polynomial in, in this li1, where the coefficients are multiple pulley logarithm of admissible indices. And then comparing multiple pulley logarithm of an admissible index to a multiple zeta value of an admissible index, uh, one can see that they are in O1 minus Z, and therefore replacing um, these multiple polygorism of admissible indices by these um, multiple zeta values, we see that this uh, multiple polygorism is given by the shuffle regularized multiple zeta value as a polynomial in Li1 plus this term here. And this is for uh, Z goes from the left uh, to 1. Okay, so we have these uh, two, two formulas here. And now, what is the relationship between truncated multiple zeta values and um, these multiple polygorithms? Well, this is given by, the, by this following here. So, so roughly speaking, the truncated multiple zeta values um, are the and Taylor coefficients of these multiple pull algorithm up to some, some factor. But so let's see. So the definition of multiple pull algorithm 
was given by, by this sum here. And now we um, consider this sum over m1 separately. So we take a sum over m, which is the old m1, and consider now the coefficient of z to the m. And this is um, looks like a multiple zeta value, but uh, the largest uh, sum in here, this m, is a fixed m. And therefore, this can be written as a difference of these truncated multiple zeta values of z m plus 1 um, minus the truncated multiple zeta values of z m. Because if you take the difference here, then you get exactly the sum where the largest um, summand is this fixed m. And then we see that if we factor out 1 minus z, that um, we get um, this sum over so this uh, tail expansion here with these uh, truncated multiple zeta values uh, as coefficients. Okay, and um, <clears throat> so so we have this explicit relationship between these uh, multiple polygonalisms and um, the uh, the truncated multiple zeta values. And now um, the statement we want to prove follows from some fact which is now really somehow independent of, of multiple zeta values. Namely, we, we need this lemma here. Oh, maybe I should. So if I have an arbitrary polynomial with real coefficients, and I define another polynomial with real coefficients by saying this is rho of this polynomial, then in general one has a statement that 1 minus z of this sum here equals this polynomial q in log 1 over 1 minus z uh, plus this extra term here. And this is again for z goes to 1. And therefore, um, so this follows by using some, some um, properties of the gamma function. And why the gamma function? Um, because here, this a, which we use to define a row, so the generating, so these um, zeta functions here is basically just uh, the gamma function of u, 1 plus u multiplied by some exponential where we plug in this um, small gamma. And um, using some uh, calculus one can and some properties of the gamma function, one can prove the statement here. And now, of course, what we want to take for the p um, p of x, we take the, um, the Staffel regularized uh, multiple zeta values and then see that if we plug in the Staffel regularized multiple zeta values in this lemma here, then um, we see that uh, we get this part here. So this part here is the truncated multiple zeta values plus um, minus this part here. So, but then uh, we can compare this. Then we basically get get this here, plus this extra part here in, in, in this sum here, where one can also check that this extra part uh, is also in this O, um, basically in this part here. So therefore, we see that um, that this part here, um, we get the the multiple polygonalisms which is the shuffle regularized multiple zeta value in this log 1 over 1 minus z. But due to this lemma, this equals also this q in log 1 over 1 minus z. And since q is a row of this p, which was this um, staffel regularized, so in our case this q is then the row of zeta staffel. And therefore we, we see that this q needs to be equal to the shuffle regularized. And this is exactly uh, what we wanted to show. And uh, in the lecture notes, you fi find more details on this. Um, but I also refer to the to the um, paper of, Gang of Ihara Kaneko and Zagi, and also to the book of uh, Chao, where you can find an even more detailed uh, proof uh, of all these facts I, I mentioned, and in particular also of this uh, lemma. Okay, so, so this theorem will be important later when we introduce these extended double shuffle relations. But before we do this, and before we go to section 3, 
Now I want to include a, a small statement also on the Q series G, because um, if we go back here, <coughs> here in this uh, corollary, we also had a statement for these um, um, for this uh, stuffle head, which was satisfied um, by our small Q series G. So here, if we like, look at this formula, then in particular we see that this Q series G one one two can also be written as a polynomial in. So this is one half G two G one squared minus uh, G two one plus G three minus G two G one uh, plus and the rest. So we, we also get some statement that this G can be written as a polynomial in G1, where the coefficients are these Q series G uh, of admissible indices. So, so therefore we now uh, consider, consider this G for admissible indices. So recall this Q series G was given, was defined by this, where these PK were these Eulerian polynomials. And, but using the definition of Eulerian polynomials, we also see that this is exactly given by this sum here, because the definition of Eulerian polynomials was that we have this equality here. Uh, x to the d. Here is k minus 1 factorial. So if you do this for each of these p, you, you get uh, this sum here. So this was some uh, well-defined uh, q-series for any index uh, k. And then we had the statement that if k is admissible, then we could multiply this g k by 1 minus q to the weight of this index, and then send q to 1. And this was exactly then the multiple zeta value, zeta k. So, <clears throat> so if we define the set of g of admissible indices by g0, so this is the q span of this gk for admissible index, and we also consider as a subspace where we take the um, q series g of weight smaller or equal to k, then this statement here says that we have a map from this space g0 smaller or equal to k to the space of multiple zeta values of weight k by sending an element to the limit um, q goes to 1, where we multiply by 1 minus q to this k. And also, of course, notice that g0 of, let's say, k minus 1 uh, is a subspace in g0 smaller k, and um, this is also in the kernel of this map that k, um, because elements in here for k minus 1, so here if I take this factor 1 minus q to the k and split up 1 minus q to the k minus 1 of f, then this already gives a, a real number, but still I have one factor 1 minus q where I send q to 1, and therefore this is in the kernel of this map. Okay, so somehow this gives a filtration of the space uh, g0. And what we want to do now, um, because we have the statement that any g can be written as a polynomial with coefficients given by things here in g0, we also want to extend this map here, like we did for these shuffle and stuffle regularized multiple zeta values. And so we want to extend this map to a map uh, to this space. So by g smaller uh, equal to k, with, without a 0, we mean uh, g k is of any index. Um, with weight small or equal to k. So we want to extend this map zk to a map also to the space um, of multiple zeta, of polynomials with coefficients in the space of multiple zeta ways by using the corollary before. But um, before we do this, so let's uh, give this statement here. Um, so the first statement is that this space g, as we already said, um, any element in G can be written as a polynomial in G1 with coefficients in G0. So, so 1 
um, follows from our corollary, the one we did at the at the beginning, uh, this one here, because we we have this statement here, and the proof of this just uses this product um, stuff ahead. But further, um, I mean, now we are in the space of, of Q series and not words, um, so we need to make some statement why this um, representation as a polynomial is, is unique, because we already know that there are, there are relations among these Q series. But the, the statement is that, oh, here I have it even written, so this is a corollary. So the statement is that this G1 um, is algebraically independent over G0. In other words, any polynomial, so there's a unique representation as an element. For any element here, there's a unique representation as a polynomial in G1 with coefficients in G0. And this statement um, follows from the fact that this G1, uh, so what is G1? G1 is this series here, uh, QMD, that if you consider this near to near q equals to 1, so we know that um, if I multiply it by 1 minus q and send q to 1, this limit doesn't exist, but near to 1 um, we have the statement that this is uh, minus log 1 minus q over uh, 1 minus q, so here we also see that uh, if I multiply this by 1 minus q and send q to 1, this still is log 1 minus q, and um, this goes to to infinity. And uh, But elements in G0, so if k is admissible, then, so here this is always when q goes to 1, um, so g of some admissible index is something like uh, 1 over 1 minus q to the weight. as we saw in before, because if we multiply this by 1 minus q to the weight of, oh, weight of, <laughs> so this is weight of the index k. Because if we multiply this by 1 minus q to the weight, and then q to 1, um, then this goes to the multiple zeta value zeta k. So, but um, because of this, um, if I have a polynomial in G1 with coefficients in the gk, then and this is a zero polynomial, then because of this here, um, if I consider this q goes to 1, and this is a zero polynomial, because the behavior of g1, um, this needs to be, every coefficient needs to be uh, zero already, and therefore this um, polynomial, uh, this representation as a polynomial in g1 uh, is unique. And therefore, um, we can now define this extended map by doing the following. So if I have an element in g smaller equal to k, um, meaning I can write it as a polynomial in g1 where these fj are in g0, so actually they are in g0 smaller equal j, and this is a this representation is unique by, by the proposition before, and therefore I can define it um, this map by sending this to this polynomial here, where I replace the g1 by the variable t, and the coefficient fj. To this I can apply this map zj, because this map zj makes sense for q series g in this g0, and this gives a multiple zeta value, and therefore this map. Um, gives a polynomial with coefficients given by multiple zeta values. And then the statement is that for any k, this map zt uh, of some weight k of some g k is exactly this stuff that regularized uh, multiple zeta value. So um, how do we uh, prove this? So uh, so if I have some some word in in H one then by our corollary from the beginning, this word can be written as a polynomial uh, uj with the stuffy product in z1, k minus j, j goes from 0 to 
Okay, so let's say the weight of uh, so the weight of this word is k. But this can also be written using the third statement of the corollary as a polynomial in Stuffel hat z1 Stuffel hat k minus j. And and now recall the difference between the Stuffel product and the Stuffel hat product was that the Stuffel product was a quasi shuffle product where the diamond was given by by just adding and the Stuffel hat product was given by the quasi shuffle product where the diamond was given by this formula here and the difference between the diamond of the, the usual Stuffel product and this diamond here are these terms here which are of a lower weight and then if you recall our proof of this theorem where we proved this representation as a polynomial um, we had this formula here where we used this formula to, to show this existence of this um, po polynomial representation and this um, these diamond products appeared so if you compare these two diamonds you see that the difference of these coefficients uj and vj the the weight j term are exactly the same because the only contribution of the weight k of the weight j part comes from this here so the difference of these are uh, so this is a linear combination of words let's say that k prime where the weight of this prime of this index is smaller than j. And now the definition of this map zt is that it applies this um, zj to these um, coefficients here and um, therefore the, the image uh, of this zj of vj is exactly the zeta map applied uh, to uj and um, <clears throat> and therefore we get the polynomial where we have exactly the zeta value coming from this uj but this was exactly the definition of the stuff that regularized uh, multiple zeta value okay so this is a the sketch of this proof but you can find uh, details also in the in the lecture notes and the main point i want to make here is that this g this q series g are defined for any index so they are well defined objects as elements in the um, uh, formal power series uh, with rational coefficients and you can calculate with them also with g1 and in the end what you really get is somehow you, you um, calculate with these stuff regularized uh, multiple zeta values without worrying about any uh, convergence issues. Okay, so this is uh, the end of section uh, 2 and now we will go to section 3 where we want to talk about uh, families of linear relations and some of the, the main question uh, in this section is what uh, linear relations are satisfied by multiple zeta values. We already saw uh, a large family of linear relations, so we had this relation zeta 2 1 equals zeta 3, we had these finite double shuffle relations, we had these uh, duality relations, and then you can ask are, are there more relations? So in general you can ask if we have this map zeta from h0 to the space of multiple zeta values, what is the kernel of this map? And so far we found a lot of elements in this kernel. So for example, uh, that the word z2z1 um, z1 minus z3 is an element in this kernel. But what else is in this kernel? And the first family of linear relation we want to um, present is um, seems to give everything. <coughs> so, so far uh, we didn't see everything, but now and we want to introduce these um, extended double shuffle relations which extend our finite double shuffle relations and before we do this I, a short notation here so if I have two words in H1 
then what I want to define is this double shuffle d s w and u, which for me means um, w shuffle u minus w stuffle u. So if they are both in h1, then this element here is also in h1. And the statement we had before, this finite double shuffle, the statement was that if w and u, if they are in the subspace h0, <coughs> then, um, well, this is then also in h0, but the statement was that this is in the kernel of this zeta map. But we also saw that um, if we restrict to the case both of them being um, in h0, then of course this gives a lot of elements in the kernel, but there's more in the kernel than this. And this is now given by the so-called extended double shuffle relations. And the statement is that we can allow one of them to be in h1, but if one of them is in h0 and the other one in h1, then still this element ds, or this, this part here, is, uh, is an element in h1, so we need to regularize this. So in other words, we have the following statement. If I have one word in h1 and I have one word in h0, then for either stuffle or shuffle, I have that if I apply, if I consider the shuffle or stuffle regularized multiple zeta value of this uh, word or of this linear combination of words here, then this is the zero polynomial. And in particular, if I look at each coefficient, I get a relation among multiple zeta values. So in particular, this means um, that if I take this element here, so, so here this, I mean, so this is ds w u, so this is a priori in h1, but I have a map from h1 to h0 by, <coughs> by taking this regularized uh, zeta map, zeta t, and if I set t equals to 0, then we just write a rec. So, uh, so we get a map from h1 to h0. And in particular, this means, so from this statement here, if we consider the constant term, we get the statement that a rec of this ds is an element in our kernel of this zeta map, which goes from here to the space of multiple zeta values. Okay, and to prove this, um, we will now use um, this comparison um, result. So <coughs> recall the shuffle regularized multiple zeta value was rho times this stuffle regularized multiple zeta value, and this was for all for all w in h1. And we take this equation and what we want to do is um, we multiply by zeta of u. So u is in h0 and therefore zeta of u is the same as zeta shuffle of u. This is the same as zeta um, stuffle of u. And um, so they are all, uh, I, I mean, this is also zeta shuffle with an arbitrary t, because this doesn't have any t, so, um, but this is also the stuff or u of t. So these are all the same, because they are all just the real number zeta u, because this u is an admissible word. So therefore, if I multiply this with this equation here, then, um, well, because this is also zeta shuffle, I can and I, I can multiply this with this zeta shuffle here, and because this zeta is an algebra homomorphism, um, I get that the left-hand side is zeta shuffle of w shuffle u, and on the right-hand side, because this is also a real number. Uh, well, it's a multiple zeta value, and it's a well, it's also a polynomial, but uh, this polynomial is just a constant. So, therefore, because this row is r-linear, if I multiply this with this number, I can 
put it inside here. And inside, I can again view it as a Staffel regularized multiple zeta value. And therefore, I can also use that this is an algebra homomorphism. And therefore, this is rho of zeta Staffel w oops, Staffel u t. <clears throat> but again now, we have rho of zeta Staffel of something by the comparison um, theorem by this statement here, this is the same as zeta shuffle w staffel u of t. And therefore we see that this equals this, and therefore we have this um, statement here for the case when this bullet is shuffle. But also, um, well, I didn't mention it earlier, but if we go back to the definition of rho, so rho, this linear map here, um, then you see, maybe you can see it here, that this rho is actually uh, invertible, because here you can inductively see what is the inverse of, uh, of these monomials here, and therefore this rho is actually a bijective map in this case here. So in our equation here, uh, we can apply a rho inverse and also get the statement for the Staffel regularized multiple zeta values. So this gives a large um, relations among uh, multiple zeta values. And um, so, I mean, this gives even more than this here. But the main, one of the main conjectures in the field is that the relations coming from this theorem here are already enough to prove any relation. So we have uh, this conjecture here which states, um, let me put this away here, um, that the kernel of our zeta map is given by the rec shuffle of these words here, so where one of them is an h1 and the other an h0. So this is the part coming from this relation here, considering the constant term. And this is also the same as the linear span of the part of these uh, Staffel regularized maps. So in other words, the extended double shuffle relations uh, give all Q linear relations among multiple zeta values. Okay, so, and now, um, if you recall, at the beginning I gave this table here. Um, so the first um, relation so here we had this table here for the weight going from 0 to 14. And here the number of admissible indices, which is given by uh, 2 to the k minus 2. And here the number of uh, conjectured relations. And in weight 3 we had this first relation, um, zeta, two equal, uh, zeta 2, 1 equals uh, zeta 3. So you can check that if you take um, w to be z1 and u to be uh, z2, then you get uh, this relation um, here. And uh, and then subtracting um, the admissible number of admissible indices minus the relations here gives this conjectured dimension uh, of Zagi, which we saw before, which is given by, by this here, where the conjecture was that the dimension of Zk is given by this small dk coming from this uh, rational function here. And also, we saw that actually an upper bound by this dimension um, is given by these numbers dk, which follows from work of Terasoma and uh, Delin Goncharov. But due to this conjecture, you might think, well, one way to, to prove this theorem here is by maybe just counting um, these extended uh, double shuffle relations, because we conjecture that um, they give all relations. So if I should, if I just count the different relations I get from here, um, then I would get uh, this upper bound. But actually, this is one of many open problems still in the field. Um, and now I go through some open problems. So one open problem is that this uh, is actually quite hard to count. Namely, the open problem is to count 
the number of linearly independent extended double shuffle relations. And by this I mean if I consider the space spent um, by these um, regularized um, um, Oh, I think here the bullet should be on the on the bottom. So if I count the if I consider the space spent by these um, double shuffle relations, where one word is an h1 and the other an h0, such that the sum of the words equals k, then counting linearly independent relations means um, calculating the dimension of this space. So this is a subset, a subspace in h0, so it's just a span of words, so it's a purely combinatorial object, and I might um, try to, to calculate the dimension of this um, q vector space. And if I can show that this q vector space, the dimension of this, is given by the number of admissible indices minus the, conject the conjectured dimension by Zagi, then I would give another proof of this upper bound here. But so far this is uh, not known how, how to do this, and the, the world record in proving this equality here is um, um, so checked up to weight 21, and this is actually a recent result, uh, I think not published yet by uh, uh, Mashide and uh, Sonobe, I think in 2020 uh, plus. <laughs> So they checked uh, by computer, they counted the number of linearly independent relations here, or they even they counted a subset of, of this, and then they showed that the dimension is given by, by this number here. So in other words, they gave a counting argument why, <coughs> why this upper bound here is true up to weight k equals 21. Okay, so so now, um, uh, yeah, well, another open problem is, so um, this conjecture says that all linear relations among multiple zeta waves come from these types of relations. And we already saw a few families of linear relations. We saw these um, zeta 3 equals zeta 2, 1. Well, there you can check. This follows from the example I, I mentioned. Then we have these finite double shuffle relations, which also clearly and follow from this by, by just taking w to be zero. But we also had this duality relation. So recall, we had this map tau from h0 to h0, which was an anti-automorphism with respect to the usual uh, concatenation product. And it was defined on the generators by sending x to y and y to x. And then we had the statement that zeta of tau of some admissible index w equals zeta of w. So this gave a linear relations and we saw this example that for example zeta 2 1 1 1 1 equals zeta k. And therefore because this is the linear relation this should follow from extended double shuffle relations. But this is also an open problem, so uh, let's remove this here. So we have this open problem, namely it is not known how to show that this is a consequence of a double, extended double shuffle. Namely, we don't know if for an admissible word v that this tau v minus v, which we know this is in the kernel of the zeta map. And therefore, it should be particularly, it should be an element in this space here of extended double shuffle relations. So in other words, um, the duality should be a consequence of the extended double shuffle relations. But this is also an open problem, and so far there are just uh, some partial results on this. Um, but the, for an arbitrary uh, word v, this is uh, not known. Okay, so now uh, let's go to um, some refinements of uh, extended double shuffle relations. But first, we give an, a special case, so which is the so-called Hoffman relation, 
which is, well, you guessed it, due to Hoffman originally. And the statement is that for an admissible index k, uh, we have the following relation. By uh, So the left-hand side is, here I take the sum from 1 to r, where r is uh, the depth of this index. And for each um, position, I go through this uh, zeta here and add a 1 at each place. <coughs> so this is the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Uh, here I also go um, from 1 to r, and then <coughs> at uh, each position uh, I subtract at this position j, which can be 0 up to uh, ki minus 2, and um, subtract it at this position and also at j plus 1 next to it. So here the, the depth of the index uh, increases, and the weight of this whole um, equality here is um, the weight of this index plus 1. So this is one explicit um, linear relation, which maybe looks a little bit uh, confusing at the beginning, but this is just a really special case of the extended double shuffle relations. <coughs> this, so if we look here at the extended double shuffle relations, then um, what we can choose for this u, so if we choose u to be that of this index k and w to be z1, um, then this relation follows um, from the extended double shuffle relation. So then this is And this is part of the exercise to show that um, if I choose um, w to be z1 and u to be this word zk, which is an h0 because this is an admissible index, that we get actually this linear relation here after applying uh, the zeta map to this. And, and there one part you should check is that, that actually we do not need any regularization, meaning that um, that z1 shuffle u uh, minus z1 shuffle u, this is actually in h0, <coughs> which isn't obvious because this is in h1, and this is also in h1, but you see the paths which are not in h0, they cancel out here, and this is actually an, an admissible index, and therefore um, if you apply zeta to this you get exactly um, this relation here. So, but this is part of the exercise, and the statement here is just that this Hoffman relation is a special case of these extended double shuffle relations. And the, in particular, the Hoffman relation is not a special case of the finite double shuffle relations, because for finite, both of them should be in H0. Okay, so, and this also leads now to the first um, <coughs> refinement of the extended double shuffle relations, which states that Hoffman relation plus finite double shuffle relations is actually enough. And this is uh, this refinement here due to Minion and Pity2 and uh, others, namely that this, the, the kernel of the zeta map um, is now we don't need any regularization, and here this w is now either admissible or it's z1, so being z1 means um, this gives a Hoffman relation, and being in h0 means this is finite double shuffle. So in the statement is the kernel is already given by this set of uh, linear relations. So in other words, Hoffman relations and the finite double shuffle relations uh, already give all linear relations among multiple zeta values. And this <coughs> is even there's an even stronger refinement of this due to Kaneko, Noro, and uh, Tsurumaki, which even makes a bigger restriction on this w, and the statement is the kernel of the zeta map um, is already given when we restrict the w to be z1, z2, z3, and z2, z1. So these three are in h0, so this together with u, this gives a finite double shuffle uh, relations and w being z1 gives the Hoffman relation. <coughs> so this is a really, is it's a subset of, or subspace of this space here. 
but the conjecture is that the kernel of this is already spanned by these types of relations. Okay, and um, of course this conjecture would imply this conjecture and this would imply the original conjecture, um, uh, this one here that the kernel is given by, by all of these extended top shuffle relations. But even on the level of words, um, we don't know if, if these conjectures are uh, equivalent. So this space here, as a subspace of H0, um, should be the same as this space here, but, but this we also don't know. So um, one open problem is to show that all these different um, conjectured kernels of the zeta map are actually the same on the level of words, meaning here the, that the um, extended double shuffle relations where I take the shuffle regularization, that this is the same as the double shuffle relation, extended double shuffle where I take the stuffle regularization, and this should be the same as Hoffman relation and finite double shuffle, and this should be the same by just taking these um, Hoffman relation and this small subset of finite double shuffle. But these equalities are not known, and of course here the only thing known is that uh, these are subspaces. And here I'm actually not sure if this is known uh, or not, but I think this is not known. At least uh, these, uh, these two are not known at all. Okay, so this is one open problem, and maybe one final open problem is um, <clears throat> if I have a relation among multiple zeta values and I multiply it by some multiple zeta value, for example by zeta 2, then I get a new relation, which is uh, uh, also true, uh, but in some higher weight. And therefore, if I consider these spaces and I multiply with some word in H0 by either using the shuffle or the stuffle product, then this should again give a relation because the zeta map uh, it's an algebra homomorphism with respect to both products, and therefore it should be still in, in the space. But I think this is also not known, namely if these spaces are actually um, um, closed under the multiplication with an element in H0. So this is the last open problem I, I want to state uh, today, namely if I take either the shuffle or stuffle product and I multiply this H0 with shuffle or stuffle with one of these spaces, and here you could also replace this by the uh, Hoffman and finite double shuffle or just these um, subspaces of finite double shuffle. And this should be um, again in this space here, because conjecturally uh, this is the space of all um, linear relations among multiple zeta values, and this is also again a linear relation among multiple zeta values. Okay, so this is uh, this finished the section of um, extended double shuffle relations and also of some refinements. And next time we will introduce um, uh, some other um, um, relations, which are known as the, the Ono relation, which um, generalizes uh, this duality relation. And to prove this relation, we will introduce uh, a new concept due to uh, Seki and Yamamoto. Um, which uses so-called uh, connected sums to give an alternative nice proof on the duality relation. So, so far we, we proved this duality relation by using the iterated integral expression, but with using their connected sum there's a really nice elementary proof by using the sum representation. And using this um, concept of connected sums, we will also prove uh, the owner relation, and not just only for multiple zeta waves, but also for these um, Q analogs of multiple zeta waves. See you then.